is American Freedom News with Rick Wiles, the most politically incorrect newscast in America, reporting global and national news too hot for television. Standing up for faith, family, and freedom, defending our Constitution and patriotic heritage. Exposing corruption and tracking the latest global developments. American Freedom News, the radio program on the cutting edge of today's news. And now, live from his studio in Granbury, Texas, here's the founder and president of American Freedom News, Rick Wiles. The Palestinian Liberation Organization says today it is all-out war in the Middle East against the Jews. During the night... Intense fighting broke out between the Israeli Defense Force and the Palestinians after the brutal lynching by the Palestinians of several Israeli soldiers. This thing has erupted into all-out fighting. The streets of, of Jerusalem and Ramallah and throughout the Middle East are in warfare today. As this violence continues throughout today. We're going to be bringing the latest reports that we're getting out of Israel right now. Uh, first of all, the uh, Reuters News Service reporting Israeli helicopters attack targets near Yasser Arafat's headquarters in two Palestinian-ruled cities Thursday after a mob stabbed two captive Israeli soldiers to death. They said helicopters hit Palestinian targets near Arafat's headquarters in the West Bank city of Ramallah and in Gaza City. Hours after young Palestinians killed the two Israeli soldiers in what Israel says is a lynching. Now this report by Reuters says Arafat's offices were not hit. And a senior Palestinian official said the Palestinian leader was unhurt in the toughest Israeli military operation since clashes erupted. 15 days ago, Mohammed Dalan, who is a security chief for Arafat, said Arafat is fine and he's stronger than before and that he is in, quote, a safe place. Now, this is based on a Reuters news report uh, issued at 11.20 p.m. Central Time. Now, there are other reports that came out saying that um, Arafat's headquarters had been bombed. I'm going to give you the latest reports from the Jerusalem report. Uh, from the Jerusalem Post, uh, the first one says Israeli helicopters had begun bombing targets in Ramallah in retaliation for the lynching of Israeli soldiers. Fighting has broken out throughout the West Bank between IDF soldiers and Palestinian police. The police headquarters, this is talking about the the Palestinian police headquarters in Ramallah, uh, where the Israeli soldiers were held, uh, was hit by an Israeli missile. The Israeli Defense Force, the IDF, has isolated Every one of the Palestinian cities in the West Bank, no Palestinians are allowed in or out. The IDF says this is part of its plan to contain the violence. Another report from the uh, Jerusalem Post out this morning, just minutes before I went on to this broadcast at 12 noon Central Time here in Texas. Another report says Israeli warships shell Palestinian headquarters. Again, the Reuters report says that Arafat's headquarters were not hit, but this report from the Jerusalem Post says that his headquarters was hit. Uh, This uh, says in the Gaza Strip, Israeli uh, helicopters have reportedly been brought into play in the skies over Gaza City. According to unconfirmed reports, Arafat's headquarters in Gaza were strifed by Israeli warships from the sea. A state of emergency has been declared in the Palestinian region. Another report on the Jerusalem Post newspaper says IDF smashes Palestinian targets. This is a reading from the, the, from the Jerusalem Post newspaper. It says crashing down like an iron fist. Israeli helicopter gunships blasted Palestinian police targets in the West Bank and Gaza Strip in retaliation for the lynching murder of two Israeli soldiers earlier today. Other reports coming out. And this is a recent one. Says uh, that two uh, uh, that more Israeli soldiers are being held hostage. 
This report says preliminary reports indicate that four Israeli soldiers are at this time being held hostage by the PLO military forces in the city of Ramallah. Details are unconfirmed, but the IDF has issued a statement confirming the fact that four Israeli soldiers are being held by the Palestinian forces in Ramallah. According to foreign news sources, uh, two of the soldiers, possibly part of an elite undercover unit, were killed. And then the BBC News has this headline, Israeli Deputy Premier says it's war. Israeli Deputy Prime Minister Benjamin ben Eliezer has said Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat has chosen the path of war with Israel, and the peace process is now dead. Also earlier today, a statement coming from the Palestinian Liberation Organization, and this was not issued by Arafat himself in his own personal words, but it is a statement from the PLO saying it is now war in the Middle East. Hamas is saying that all Jews are legitimate targets. This is another report. Jerusalem Post says the Palestinians are at war with Israel. Therefore, all Israeli citizens are considered targets for Hamas. This is according to the Hamas political leader Ishmael Abu Shanab. He said uh, this uh, earlier today. Uh, He's a, uh, a Gaza University professor. He says the final decision will be taken by Hamas military wing, but he says he believes the Palestinian streets now feel uh, that the time has come to seek revenge for the loss of Palestinian lives. He said today, quote, we are in a state of war, and in a state of war, all Israeli targets are legitimate. Again, I want to remind you that we reported yesterday that that the Palestinians, uh, the Hezbollah, has declared that tomorrow, Friday, will be a day of rage. They've asked all Palestinians to strike out against Jews tomorrow in an escalated attack against all Israeli citizens and targets. Now, this has erupted uh, uh, today, so no one knows what tomorrow is going to be. I I reported on yesterday's program that, that I was getting conflicting reports yesterday as I prepared for the broadcast because the American news media was giving the appearance that all was calm, that there was peace coming back into the Middle East, that violence had had dropped, and uh, that Clinton's uh, negotiations were working. And and I said on yesterday's program, I said, this is not the the same picture that I'm getting from from the European and Middle East news sites that I was visiting. Uh, That showed that clearly there were rising signs of anger and threats of, of revenge. And clearly that's been the case. I can only assume that the American news media was trying to, uh, to pacify the American public in, in uh, anticipation of last night's debates between George Bush and Al Gore, trying to give the American public the appearance that uh, Clinton's foreign policy is working. But obviously it's not the case. The thing is falling apart. Also, uh, this is another recent report that I found uh, just a few minutes ago that Yasser Arafat has emptied the jails and prisons of Palestine. He has released all known terrorists. They have been released into the streets of Israel as of this morning. And uh, one Israeli official says that they are now prepared for a wave of terror. Senior Israeli security officials said Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was behind the release of Hamas and Islamic Jihad terror perpetrators. He says the motive is to unite the Palestinians. Senior Israeli source said, quote, we are before a wave of terror encouraged by the Palestinian Authority. This is the tax that Arafat is willing to pay for Palestinian unity. Among the masses of terrorists released today are not only master bomb makers, but also terror cell operators and those trained to commit suicide bombings. Now, that brings me to the other report, and that is that we all awoke early today to the news that a U.S. uh, naval ship, USS Cole, was attacked uh, during the night, a suicide bombing against the USS Cole. At least four U.S. sailors have been killed in what, U.S. officials are describing as a suicide attack on a U.S. Navy destroyer. 
in the Yemeni port of Aden. An American spokesman said a small inflatable craft packed with high explosives had rammed a destroyer, blasting a huge hole in its side. Efforts were underway uh, earlier today to save the vessel from sinking. One sailor is missing. At least 30 have been injured. There's approximately a 40-foot hole on the port side of the ship. Now, is this a sign of a wave of terrorist attacks coming to the United States of America? Are we going to see Palestinian and Islamic attacks inside America today, tomorrow, this weekend? I've mentioned on this program many times that there is coming a day that there will be a jihad inside the streets of America when they get the when they get the, the go-ahead to begin their bloodshed. You're going to find out how many of the 14 million Muslims inside this country are truly here for the purpose of terrorism. Now, just before going on the program, I had learned that Janet Reno is sending federal agents uh, overseas to investigate this bombing case. Now, I've got a, I've got a, a soundbite from Janet Reno as she talks about dispatching FBI agents to investigate the bombing of the USS Cole. This is Janet Reno today. We will do everything we can to find out what caused this tragedy. The FBI is working together with the Defense Department and other investigative agencies to investigate the accident, the incident. The FBI has already dispatched local resources to the scene, and it is sending investigators, explosive experts, and an evidence response team. That's Janet Reno commenting on her decision today to send FBI agents uh, overseas to investigate the bombing of the USS Cole. Again, I want to remind you that as of this week, the first week of October, according to Bill Clinton's presidential directive, by an executive order of Bill Clinton, starting in October of 2000, if there are any terrorist attacks inside the United States, if a state of emergency or martial law is declared, Janet Reno, as Attorney General, will be in control of all operations inside the United States. Just keep that in your the corner of your mind and just remember that as the days go by and this thing begins to melt down, is there a connection between all this? I don't know. I know this. I don't trust Bill Clinton, and I don't trust Janet Reno, and I don't trust Yasser Arafat. And if you put all three of them together, I definitely don't trust them. Also, John McCain, uh, I've got a soundbite here from Senator John McCain on this subject also. This is what Senator McCain said earlier today. Our uh, thoughts and prayers go out to the families of those who were killed, missing, and, and injured. This is a despicable and disgraceful act. Uh, we clearly do not know who's responsible for it. But does it we sound like a, a terrorist attack to you? Well, I don't think there's any doubt. I also believe, Darren, that we will find out. And once we find out that they, we will exact a price, a very heavy price, on those that perpetrated this, this despicable act. Uh, this bombing of the USS Cole is going to obviously put pressure on Bill Clinton uh, to take some type of retali- retaliation against uh, uh, the Islamic extremists who who killed the U.S. sailors today. Well, this if he, if he does strike out against uh, the Islamic groups who, who uh, are responsible for this terrorist attack, obviously it's going to put the United States on the side of Israel and against the Palestinians, which will only whip up the rage and the anger uh, around the world among Palestinians and Muslims against the United States of America. Now, also, interestingly, I found today that the director of the CIA, George Tenet, met earlier today with Yasser Arafat in Gaza City. This article from uh, the Middle East says CIA director George Tenet met with Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat on Thursday after two Israeli soldiers were killed in a Palestinian mob attack on the West Bank. Tenet had planned earlier to meet with the Palestinian security officials to try to draw Israel and the Palestinians back to the negotiating table, but met instead with Arafat in Gaza. What is the significance of the director of the CIA in the Middle East today meeting with Yasser Arafat? I don't know. I find it very unusual. You seldom see the director of the CIA 
involved in diplomatic missions. The CIA is supposed to be a spy agency. Of course, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of skull and bones members in the CIA, and there's a lot of Masonic influence in the CIA. And and obviously, if you look at Masonic symbols, you will see a very strong influence of of Arab symbols in all Masonic symbols. Is there a connection? I don't know. I just find it unusual that the director of the CIA would be in the Middle East today meeting with Yasser Arafat as war breaks out. Also, Reuters News Service is reporting that a half a million Iraqis have volunteered to fight against the Jews. This, again, from Reuters News Service says more than a half million Iraqis have volunteered to fight with the Palestinians against the Israeli troops. This is uh, from the INA, the Iraqi news agency in Baghdad. The news agency quoted a a, uh, political official in Baghdad, Adnan Dawad Salman, as saying 514,658 men and women in Baghdad have volunteered to liberate Jerusalem from the Zionists. Iraq's most influential newspaper said on Tuesday that President Saddam Hussein's eldest son, Uday, had become the first Iraqi to volunteer to defend Palestine against Israeli troops. The newspaper, which is called Babel, find that very interesting, the the main newspaper in Baghdad is Babel, uh, published 75 names, including Uday's, saying that they had volunteered to fight to defend dear Palestine. I mentioned on yesterday's program that I believe I believe Saddam Hussein is is relishing the opportunity to come back into the good graces of his Arabic brothers by leading the charge against Israel. He's been licking his chops for weeks at the possibility of an all out war. And I think I think this is his opportunity. I think he's going to be the one who who is going to say to the Arabs, "Get behind me! I will lead the Arab assault against Israel." Also, Washington Times reporting today: Arab leaders are keeping their distance from Clinton. He's being snubbed. Arab leaders, according to the Washington Times, have snubbed President Bill Clinton and told him to stay home. Wow. They invited Saddam Hussein to Cairo to sit down them, sit down with them for the first time since the Gulf War. Clinton yesterday downplayed the refusal of Egypt to host him and leaders of Israel and, and the Palestinians in a special summit meeting to end the fighting. Clinton had sought the summit, but Egypt said it might conflict with the meeting of Arab leaders scheduled for October 20th. Again... It's what I was saying on yesterday's program. The Arabs are uniting against Clinton. They're uniting around uh, Saddam Hussein. And you've got, for the first time in in many years, at least going back uh, to uh, 1990 in the Gulf War, for the first time the Arabs are solidly united. And Saddam Hussein is their big hero right now. Also, Saudi Arabia's defense minister is in a meeting today in Beijing with the Chinese PLA. Go figure that one. And also, Europe becomes a new zone of war, according to the Guardian newspaper in London. The rage against the Jews has spread into Europe with the burning of Jewish synagogues in France and major protest against Israel in London streets. I got to take a break. When I come back, I'll have more news. You've got to hear the rest of today's newscast. You're not going to believe some of these reports I've got today. I'll be back in a minute. Rick Wiles, American Freedom News. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the citizen reporter on the cutting edge of today's news. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the people's news reporter. Chinese PLA officers on American military bases, Russian submarines patrolling America's coastlines, radical Muslim secret training camps inside the USA, a U.N. army, global government, and world religion, West Nile virus, bubonic plague, and bioterrorism, illegal immigration, the rising European superstate. 
and plans to replace the American dollar with a common currency. News the left-wing media refuses to report. What else is happening the news media doesn't tell you? Listen to the program that's on the cutting edge of news, American Freedom News. Finally, there's another news network reporting news too hot for TV, American Freedom News. The first Internet radio news network standing up for faith, family, and freedom. American Freedom News, the People's News Network. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the citizen reporter on the cutting edge of today's news. And now here's Rick Wiles. Hey, the Los Angeles Times says today that Israel's left-wing Jews are taking a, a beating, and that's not a physical beating. They're taking a beating in the political circles amid the violence. It says activists feel a sense of humiliation and betrayal as a result of the Palestinian uprising. Again, this is L.A. Times today. It says for years they were the political conscience of the peace process. They gave backing to, to various governments in the effort to end conflict with Israel's Arab neighbors. Today, Israeli leftists are in a crisis, their foundations shattered by two weeks of bloodletting that have brought into full focus the hatred of many Palestinians for Jews. Leftists feel robbed of their worldview, of the notion that sacrificing in the name of peace was the greater good. On the defensive, angry and anguish, many are starting to sound like right-wingers. How about that? Poor liberals, left-wing socialists. They thought that they could compromise their way into peace. They've been the ones in Israel and here in the United States, the liberal Jews who have been pushing and pushing and pushing for Israel to, to give more and more concessions to the Arabs, believing that if they gave up land, gave up sovereignty over the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, that those... Palestinians and the PLO and Yasser Arafat and Hamas and Hezbollah and all of these terrorist groups would suddenly lay down their arms and sing Kumbaya with the Jews. It ain't happening. And now the LA Times says that many of the leftist Jews in Israel are starting to sound like like right-wingers. You know what that means? It means they're picking up their rifles and they're saying, we're going to have to fight. We're going to have to defend our homeland. We're going to have to defend our families and our houses and our our own lives. Someday this is going to happen here in the United States. All the pinko socialists and all of the greedy uh, businessmen who have been uh, cozying up the red China, believing that by being uh, the best buddies with red China that somehow we would get peace, they're going to be in the same same condition someday. They're going to be shocked and dismayed when the red dragon raises its fist to crash down on the United States of America. And they're going to have the same feeling. We're going to have to fight to defend our lives and our families and our homeland. Also, another uh, report says, this is from the Israel Wire, says that uh, Ariel Sharon today told uh, Ehud Barak he will not join an emergency coalition government with Barak. I think most likely Barack's government is going to collapse any day. I think the people of Israel have lost confidence in Ehud Barak. He allowed Clinton to manipulate him in this entire process for the last year. Clinton trying to get a peace deal done before his term runs out. And it was Clinton who was who was prodding Ehud Barak to give more and more concessions to, to the uh, Palestinians. This thing has blown up in his face. And his... I said a couple months ago, uh, back in the summer, when the peace talks collapsed at Camp David, I said, I said, look at what has happened. The way Clinton has mismanaged this this process, I said, Yasser Arafat, and and folks, those of you who who listen to me every day, you'll remember me saying this back in in the summer. I said, Yasser Arafat left Camp David, Maryland, went back to Palestine as a conquering hero, and Ehud Barak went back to Palestine and went back to Israel with his government in a shambles. Now, here we are several months later, and we now have all-out war in the Middle East, and and Bill Clinton is not even welcomed right now. 
the Arabs are telling Clinton to keep his nose out of the, the affairs. They're getting friendly with Saddam Hussein again. Saudi Arabia has their defense minister in Beijing, China today with meetings with the PLA. It's amazing. This thing is coming apart fast. And listen to this. This I don't know whether to laugh or cry over this article. Uh, this is in the Jerusalem Post today. Christian tour groups from the United States are still flowing into Jerusalem even today. It says, although the current tense situ- situation has already caused a significant number of American Jewish community missions due to come to Jerusalem this month to cancel, it has hardly affected the plans of Christian groups due to arrive this week for the International Christian Embassy's Feast of Tabernacles celebration. According to the Executive Director of the United Jewish Communities Overseas Programs and Missions, uh, four of the 20 groups due to arrive from Monday have already canceled, and the remaining groups are also worried about the situation as the deadline grows closer. He said the situation is very, very bad. But that's not the case with the Christians. The article quotes Joanne uh, Lukoff, director of the International Christian Embassy in, in Jerusalem, saying that of, of over 100 groups expected for the Feast of Tabernacles celebration, only two have canceled. What does that say? Is it, what does it say about American Christians? Is it that they've got faith? Or does it say they don't have a lick of common sense? What does it say about their ability to hear from God about what is going on? I, you know, I just mentioned this uh, to someone privately a couple of days ago. I said, uh, I said, I wonder how many, how many uh, TV ministries and how many large churches are still going forward today with their, with their uh, tours of Jerusalem. Because they're so uninformed about world affairs that they don't even know the place is ready to blow up. And, and, and these churches are so, these pastors and TV evangelists have their heads so deep in the sand, they don't even know that Bible prophecy is being uh, fulfilled right now, this very week. You know, Paul Crouch said the other day he didn't even know anything about the UN meeting, the summit meeting. It's amazing. So, I, you know, I can, I, well, at least they're going to they're gonna see Bible prophecy up close. They'll be there for a front row seat as they watch uh, things happen. Maybe they'll get to see Ezekiel 38 take place. A lot of things are going to happen in the next few days. Remember, tomorrow is a day of rage. Hezbollah has declared Friday as a day of rage against the Jews. Now, on top of all of this, Wall Street today is in a nosedive. I don't have the latest numbers in front of me. Uh, this is uh, just before I walked into the studio at 12 noon Central Time. At at uh, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Time, the Dow Jones Industrial Average fell 234 points to 10,179. Now, that was back, uh, it had come up a little bit from... A low of, they were down 300 points earlier this morning. So as of right now, I don't know what the exact numbers are as the time as I'm doing this program, but it's obvious at Wall Street uh, that the euphoria of the Clinton years is starting to evaporate as reality comes home and, and people are beginning to realize stuff is falling apart. See, Clinton's had the smoke and mirrors game going for eight years. And it's just been a. It's it always been doing is uh, uh, putting band aids on things. He's been he's been juggling balls. He hasn't solved any problems. He's he's actually made them worse. Regardless if it, whether it's the Middle East or Bosnia or whatever he's touched, all this stuff is blowing up in his face at the last minute, and he's running out of time to to keep it going. And 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 what's happening? He's a lame duck now. And Arab leaders are saying, hey, you're a nobody now. We don't, we don't want to talk to you. You've only got a few months left. You're not important to us. Get out of here. Go home. Keep your nose back in Washington. Now, a report came out yesterday 
that China has been on a major global shopping spree for military weapons. This is a Reuters News Service report says China has significantly upgraded its conventional arms by buying equipment from Russia and other countries in recent years. But it is unclear what effect this will have on China's ability to threaten Asian stability, according to a new congressional report released Tuesday. Sometimes their conclusions, they just, they just amaze me. They're out. China's on a, a, a weapon buying spree. And this congressional report says, but it's unclear whether it, whether it's going to have any impact on stability in, the, in, in Asia. The report by the Library of Congress, nonpartisan Congressional Research Service, said China's ability to take advantage of its new military acquisitions will depend on many factors, including the quality of training to conduct joint military operations. Well, isn't that what Clinton's been doing? Isn't the... The, the, the Secretary of the U.S. Navy now in Beijing this very week to, to work out more joint military maneuvers with China? Uh, didn't we report a week or two ago that Admiral Blair says he wants to see the Chinese Navy involved in joint military training exercises with the U.S. Navy? This is what Clinton's been doing. He has been upgrading the military operations of the PLA for the last eight years. And I'm just amazed that here in this political campaign, the word China hasn't come up. Have you heard Gore or Bush even say the word China in this campaign? You know why? Because Wall Street has told both candidates, we don't want to aggravate China. So don't mention China's name. Don't mention espionage. Don't mention their military threat to the United States or we won't give you any money. Folks, the campaign, the political campaign, is not for you and me. These two candidates are are, are rehearsing, they're auditioning for, the, for Wall Street and for the bankers. That's all this campaign is about. You and I are just an afterthought. But they're really auditioning for the, for the approval of Wall Street and the international bankers. This article says China has made, this is a a quote from the report, China has made some significant qualitative upgrades through foreign acquisitions. But it remains to be seen how these acquisitions will be expanded and linked to other PLA improvements. Among the arms acquired by Beijing from Russia are 48 SU-27 jet fighters. They fly faster, farther, and more maneuverable than previous Chinese warplanes and in many ways are comparable to the best fighters in the U.S. But the researchers also point out that China has acquired the the sovereign many warships, something we've talked about numerous times. Taipei Times in Taiwan says China's new navy poses a threat. Says the Pentagon announced today that Secretary of Navy Richard Danzing departed on October 10th for a one-week visit to China. The article goes on to describe, this is the Taiwan newspaper, that uh, the Chinese Navy is a serious threat to the United States Navy. Also, Taiwan flexed its muscles yesterday. The Taiwan Air Force uh, displayed a lot of their new jet fighters yesterday uh, to send a message to China that they are prepared to fight. So i got to take a break. I'll be back in a minute with more news on American Freedom News. American Freedom News is your alternative source for news. We investigate the news the television networks are afraid to report. Keep tuned to this station. Rick will be back with more global news. This is Dr. John Wilkie with a Life Jewel. There have been ongoing trials testing the French abortion pill RU486 in the United States. In these, a woman was excluded from the trials if she had a problem with her liver, lungs, kidneys, adrenals, or heart. If she had high blood pressure, anemia, or blood clots. If she had diabetes and needed insulin. If she had an intrauterine device. If she was breastfeeding. If she was under 18, over 35, 
smoked more than 10 cigarettes a day, or had any kind of a circulation problem, if she was taking anti-blood clotting medicines or glucocorticoid therapy, if she had a tubal pregnancy or any other mass or condition in her tubes or ovaries, if there was any suspicion that she was having a miscarriage. All of these were excluded. In spite of these exclusions, these pills caused many physical complications. Standing up for faith, family, and freedom, you're listening to Rick Wiles. And now, here's Rick Wiles. Welcome back to American Freedom News. Of course, the big news today, Israel is in all-out war with the Palestinians. The Iranian uh, Iraqi news agency reporting that over a half million Iraqis have, have volunteered along with uh, Saddam Hussein's crazy uh, son, Uday. He's crazier than a bed bug, folks. Now you find out, uh, do some investigation about Uday Hussein. The guy is nuts. He has volunteered to lead an army of Iraqis against the, uh, against the Jews. Palestinian authorities said earlier today that, that uh, there is all-out war now. They declared war. This is an official declaration of war. Israel has not declared war yet, but the Palestinians have declared war against, uh, against Israel. And, of course, we have the bombing of the USS uh, Cole with the uh, killing of four U.S. sailors that has taken place uh, during the night. Uh, things have definitely heated up. Listen, I just, uh, I'm just i not trying to provoke uh, fear in anyone. I've been uh, trying to do my very best not to uh, sound as a, as a fear monger on the program. But my own personal recommendation to you is today is a good day to check uh, your status, uh, your supplies, your uh, your uh, food supplies, your water, your fuel, uh, anything that you feel that you need to have uh, in uh, in supply. Today would be a good day to do that. Don't put it off. I'm not gonna not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but I'm just this is my own personal feeling. I think with the Wall Street is starting to unravel. Uh, Janet Reno is uh, officially now the person who takes over this country in a state of emergency. I think there's a real possibility of of terrorist attacks inside the United States in the next few days or weeks. We have the Arabs meeting uh, October 20th. Saddam Hussein uh, volunteering to lead an army against Israel. Folks, I I wouldn't be complacent if I were you. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be um, indifferent to these things. Pay attention to the signs. And and as I said the other day on the program, I I I think it was uh, Tuesday's program. I, I I woke up Tuesday with a great sense of urgency uh, in my heart to tell people to make sure everything is all right between you and God. This this program is really not about news. It's about it's about what is coming to this world. And what is coming is what God said would happen someday. He would judge the nations, and he would judge the wickedness of the nations. And we're getting closer and closer and closer, and this thing is moving faster. And so I'm just, I'm just saying today's a good day. Check your heart. Check your relationship with the Lord. Make sure everything is all right. And there, today's a good day. If you, People in your family who are wayward from, from Christ, today would be a good day to pray for them, to, to witness to them. And, and also on the natural side, on the physical side, just take care of the natural things that you need to do in terms of food and supplies and just, uh, you know, if you still have um, things stored up from last year, you might want to just do a quick update and see uh, what, what has been depleted and what are the state of your supplies right now. Things could get out of control real fast. Uh, we just heard from Dr. Wilkie regarding uh, the abortion pill, RU486. I have an article on the website today uh, that the uh, Hao Lian Pharmaceutical Factory in China will manufacture the baby-killing pill for America. Uh, this is uh, from the Washington Post today. 
supporters of RU486, which offer an alternative to surgical abortions, have fought for years uh, seeking a manufacturer to, to produce it for the U.S. market. Now it's going to be made for the United States by the Chinese. Are you surprised? Why would we be surprised that a, a genocide pill uh, would be brought into the United States by the Chinese? Think about it. The Chinese uh, regularly uh, kill their children. They, in, they strictly enforce the two-child rule. And uh, obviously Clinton has no qualms about uh, bringing a Chinese baby-killing pill into the United States. Why am I telling you this? Because of what's going on in the Middle East, my folks. We're going to pay a price. America is going to pay a price for our abominations before God. And you need to see the connections between these news articles. Uh, Also, China uh, has uh, canceled $1 billion of African debt. I've been talking this week about the uh, various meetings that are taking place in Beijing this week. There's a flurry of meetings going on in China this week. And uh, there are 40 African nations uh, who have sent their their delegates uh, to Beijing uh, for a big powwow with the communists. And yesterday, Jing Zemin, president of China, announced that China would cancel $1 billion worth, $1 billion worth of, of outstanding debt. Also, Madeleine Albright is going to North Korea. BBC News says U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright has accepted an invitation to visit North Korea and meet the country's leader, Kim Jong-il. It has also been speculated that she is going there to prepare the way for uh, Bill Clinton to meet uh, with the North Korean communists in November Uh, Clinton is scheduled to go to Vietnam in uh, this November after the elections. Uh, World Net Daily reported several months ago uh, that uh, that, uh, U.S. naval uh, officials are privately outraged. They They are saying privately that Clinton is going to order the U.S. Navy to lower the U.S. flag as our naval ships sail into the port of uh, Vietnam, of communist Vietnam. Now, the White House denies it, but again, this is a report that was put out by World Net Daily about two months ago that there will uh, be a presidential order uh, commanding the U.S. naval vessels to lower their flags, lower than the Vietnam flag, as they enter the ports of Vietnam. Also, Clinton has signed a bill easing um, uh, trade with Cuba, Signed that yesterday, the day before he signed the bill, uh, opening up uh, trade with China. Is there a communist nation Bill Clinton hasn't helped? He's only got a few months to help his commie buddies. Also, I've got a report here from from Russia. This is Reuters saying the U.S. Agriculture Department is continuously monitoring the food situation in Russia. Russia is facing a food shortage. I've reported for the past year how locusts, hundreds of millions, indeed billions of locusts, have devoured the the agricultural crops of Russia. They've also been attacking the crops of China. And now, this month, they are devouring the crops of Australia. Seems like somewhere I read about plagues and pestilences and earthquakes and all these things happening in the last days before the return of Jesus Christ. Has anyone ever read that? Anybody paying attention to all these things happening right now? Well, if you're watching American Christian television, I doubt if you're going to hear about it. Hey, now listen to this. I've got a couple minutes here. I've got to get to this stuff. I've been, oh, this, the stuff that I found today, this is incredible. Um, first of all, in Australia... Uh, Thousands of people are flocking to a wooden fence in Australia where they claim that there is an apparition of the face of Jesus Christ. Uh, This has uh, become a huge event in uh, in Australia. And I've got the article on the website from BBC News, but listen to this one. This this one is a mind-boggler. There is a group called the Second Coming Project that wants to take... 
DNA samples from the Shroud of Turin. You know, the, the, the cloth that many say uh, is the, the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. They want to take DNA samples from the Shroud of Turin and clone Jesus Christ. I, this is for real, folks. Fox News is reporting this today. Uh, let me read this to you. It's on our website, American Freedom News. While Christians believe Jesus Christ will someday return, they don't. They they probably don't think he'll arrive by the way of a petri dish. Yet that's exactly what a secretive group called the Second Coming Project is trying to do: clone Jesus. Members of the group see cloning technology as a chance to literally bring Christ to the modern age, find out exactly how divine he is, and perhaps work a miracle. I got news for him. He's quite capable of doing all those things by himself. He doesn't need to be cloned in a test tube in order to come back. He's going to come back, and they will know how divine he is. The article says, and again, this is Fox News. Uh, they quotes uh, one of the leaders saying, I'm hoping it will bring world peace, said a source within the group which claims 14 members from a wide range of religions and professions, not some Armageddon as a tremendous battle where, where everyone dies, as some people believe. The group hopes a cloned Jesus fetus could be placed in a female volunteer's womb and then carried to term in a totally immaculate conception. The birth is tentatively scheduled for December 25, 2001, and the mother wouldn't necessarily, necessarily have to be a virgin, the source said. Once born, the baby Jesus clone would be like any other kid, savior of mankind or not, except that they hope he'll usher in an age of peace on earth. They quote... Uh, the source is saying, quote, we're not planning on raising the child in the lab and in, 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 in filling him with our beliefs. If this child is what we hope he is, he won't need to be raised that way. Folks, this is incredible. I mean, here we are on the day that Israel is in war with the Palestinians. And, and, and we're also hearing that a group of of people want to take DNA and clone Jesus Christ and bring him back to earth. The article says the group hopes to, to obtain a small DNA sample from one of the countless Christian relics that devotees claim uh, uh, include a, a piece of Jesus' body, a drop of blood, or a strand of hair. The, uh, the group hopes a relic owner will be kind enough to lend them a bit of genetic material and that a scientist would be willing to perform the cloning procedure for free. Are you comprehending this? A cloned Jesus walking the earth, bringing peace to the earth. Now that's a scenario for the Antichrist to come to this earth that I've never heard. I never thought about this. The Antichrist coming to earth as a cloned copy of Jesus? This is out of science fiction. Now, BBC News has an article today. This is the one I've reported on a couple times, but this thing is making news all over the world. Uh, scientists are urging action over giant tsunami threat to the United States. Geologists have told the British government that the country risks being hit by a giant wave of water that could destroy many coastal communities. Experts at the University College of London have contacted the science minister, Lord Sainsbury, to warn him that a collapsing volcano in the Canary Islands could send the wall of water hundreds of meters high sweeping out over the Atlantic. Their research suggests that the Caribbean and the east coast of the United States would take the brunt of the devastation, but high water could also submerge large parts of the west coast of Great Britain. Do you ever get the feeling that the news I'm reporting, this is like science fiction, this is like a movie, this isn't real, my friends? Look at what I'm reporting today. They want to clone Jesus. Now, another report says scientists are fearful that a volcano is going to collapse and bring a huge tidal wave 
sweeping over the United States of America. I'm not making up this news. This is real. You have to be totally, totally, totally spiritually dead and blind not to see that we are at the end of the age and that Jesus Christ is coming back to this planet any day. We're about to be plunged into the days of tribulation. And yet most people in this country, including the religious, are just caught up into materialism. They're caught up into into the things of this world. They're caught up into all of these things. Now listen, I'm going to take a quick break. When I come back, I'm going to tell you I got another incredible article. You've got to hear this one. Don't go away. I'll be back in one minute with News Too Hard to Believe on American Freedom News. I'm Rick Wiles. Stay tuned. I'll be back in just one minute. Keep your radio tuned to this station. Rick will be back with more global news. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the most politically incorrect news reporter in America. History was made on today's date. Stay tuned for an American Minute with Bill Federer. October 12th, 1492, two hours after midnight, Columbus sighted land. He named the first island San Salvador, meaning Holy Savior. After meeting the natives, Columbus wrote, So that they might be well disposed toward us, for I knew that they were a people to be converted to our holy faith rather by love than by force, I gave to some red caps and to others glass beads. They became so entirely our friends that it was a wonder to see. I believed that they would easily be made Christians, for it seemed to me they had no religion of their own. This has been an American Minute with Bill Federer. For a free transcript, call American Minute at 1-888-USA-WORD. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the People's News Reporter. And now, here's Rick Wiles. On this day, 1492, the Santa Maria's lookout cried, Terra, Terra. Columbus named the island San Salvador, which means Holy Savior. Later, he wrote about this day. October 12th, 1492, he said, I am a most unworthy sinner, but I have cried out to the Lord for grace and mercy, and they have covered me completely. I have found the sweet consolation since I made it, my whole purpose to enjoy his marvelous presence. No one should fear to undertake any task in the name of our Savior if it is just, and if the intention is purely for his holy service. Those are the words of Christopher Columbus, a man who has now been declared politically incorrect in America, a man whose name and memory is been, has been blotted out in most of our school textbooks and history classes. Last weekend, in, in Colorado, in Denver, Colorado, 142 people arrested by Denver police trying to stop the Columbus Day Parade. This is how insane our country has become in just a matter of a few decades, we've allowed socialism, socialism, we've allowed humanism, we've allowed the left-wing loony liberals to dominate the political discourse of this nation. And they've brought us to a point, they've brought us to the brink of destruction as a nation. We need to remember the words of Christopher Columbus on this day, because any moment this country could be plunged into one of the worst crises we've ever faced Be on guard. Be alert. Pay attention to what's happening today. Stock market, I just got a report. The stock market is continuing to drop as I'm doing this program. The violence continuing to escalate in the Middle East. A call for for a day of rage tomorrow by the Palestinians. Are we going to see terrorist attacks here in the United States? Is Janet Reno suddenly going to be thrust into a place of being in charge of this country in a, in a time of national emergency? Has all this been planned? Is, is all of this carefully calculated to take place in the last days of the Clinton administration? We can only watch these things as they develop. Listen to this next report. Two U.S. senators 
want to set up a global C-SPAN television channel. A global government C-SPAN TV channel. This is in the New York Times today. It's on our website, AmericanFreedomNews.com. Two senators propose setting up a global equivalent of C-SPAN, the Public Affairs Cable Channel, as a way of dismantling what they call the formidable wall of secrecy that shields decision-making at leading international agencies. The senators, Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York and Ron Wyden of Oregon, both Democrats, and Ron Wyden, one of the most liberal Democrats in in the U.S. Senate, said that despite pressure from Congress, several leading American and international financial and trade bodies continue to operate behind closed doors. They're particularly talking about the World Trade Organization, the IMF, and uh, other groups like the International Olympic Committee. They also called for disclosure by the Federal Reserve Board. The two senators suggest creating a global television network devoted to televising international agency uh, meetings. So, sometime in the future, we're going to have a global government C-SPAN and we'll get to watch Kofi Annan. And we'll get to watch the UN uh, Assembly as they make decisions for global government. And the American people will be desensitized to world government. We'll be told, just watch your, your representatives on television. Your global government representatives are on TV every day. And you can watch them as they are deciding the fate of the planet and making this a safer place to live. Speaking of the United Nations, uh, coming up very soon, uh, let's see, October 23rd, the first gathering of United Nations Messengers of Peace and Goodwill Ambassadors. They're going to be gathering at the U.N. headquarters in New York October 23rd uh, to reflect on the role of celebrity uh, advocates for the cause of world peace. The day-long event will feature Nobel Prize laureates, champion athletes, actors, musicians, authors, scientists, and news media personalities from 20 countries. A public forum about the influence of famous people. Uh, 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 Let me read this again. A public forum about the influence that famous people have in drawing attention to global problems and promoting a better world will take place from 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the U.N.'s Economic and Social Council Chamber. It will be moderated by CNN international correspondent Riz Khan. Some of the people who will be there, of course, uh, uh, Michael Douglas will be one of the stars that will be at that uh, U.N. meeting of celebrities to advance the cause of world peace. Listen, i got to sign off on the radio, WWCR. If you're listening on the net, stay tuned. I'll be back in a minute with more news. You've been listening to American Freedom News with Rick Wiles. To contact Rick, write to American Freedom News, Post Office Box 459, Granbury, Texas, 76048. Call 817-578-3838. Visit us on the Internet at AmericanFreedomNews.com. Listen Monday through Friday to American Freedom News, news you'll never hear on television. Members of the group see cloning technology as a chance to literally bring Christ to the modern age, find out exactly how divine he is, and perhaps work a miracle. I got news for him. He's quite capable of doing all those things by himself. He doesn't need to be cloned in a test tube in order to come back. He's going to come back, and they will know how divine he is. 
The article says, and again, this is Fox News. Uh, they quotes uh, one of the leaders saying, I'm hoping it will bring world peace, said a source within the group, which claims 14 members from a wide range of religions and professions, not some Armageddon as a tremendous battle where, where everyone dies, as some people believe. The group hopes a clone Jesus fetus could be placed in a female volunteer's womb and then carried to term in a totally immaculate conception. The birth is tentatively scheduled for December 25, 2001, and the mother wouldn't necessarily, necessarily have to be a virgin, the source said. Once born, the baby Jesus clone would be like any other kid, savior of mankind or not, except that they hope he'll usher in an age of peace on earth. They quote uh, the sources in, in many years, at least going back uh, to uh, 1990 in the Gulf War. For the first time, the Arabs are solidly united, and Saddam Hussein is their big hero right now. Also, Saudi Arabia's defense minister is in a meeting today in Beijing with the Chinese PLA. Go figure that one. And also, Europe becomes a new zone of war. According to the Guardian newspaper in London, the rage against the Jews has spread into Europe with the burning of Jewish synagogues in France and major protest against Israel in London streets. I've got to take a break. When I come back, I'll have more news. You've got to hear the rest of today's newscast. You're not going to believe some of these reports I've got today. I'll be back in a minute. Rick Wiles, American Freedom News. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the citizen reporter on the cutting edge of today's news. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the people's news reporter. Chinese PLA officers on American military bases, Russian submarines patrolling America's coastlines, radical Muslim secret training camps inside the USA, a UN army, global government, and world religion, West Nile virus, bubonic plague, and bioterrorism, illegal immigration, the rising European super state, and... Pl- now, just before going on the program, I had learned that Janet Reno is sending federal agents... Uh, overseas to investigate this bombing case. Now I've got a, I've got a, a soundbite from Janet Reno as she talks about dispatching FBI agents to investigate the bombing of the USS Cole. This is Janet Reno today. We will do everything we can to find out what caused this tragedy. The FBI is working together with the Defense Department and other investigative agencies to investigate the accident, the incident. The FBI has already dispatched local resources to the scene, and it is sending investigators, explosive experts, and an evidence response team. That's Janet Reno commenting on her decision today to send FBI agents uh, overseas to investigate the bombing of the USS Cole. Again, I want to remind you that as of this week, the first week of October, according to Bill Clinton's presidential directive, By an executive order of Bill Clinton, starting in October of 2000, if there are any terrorist attacks inside the United States, if a state of emergency or martial law is declared, Janet Reno, as Attorney General, will be in control of all operations inside the United States. Just keep that in your the corner of your mind and just remember that as the days go by and this thing begins. But it remains to be seen how these acquisitions will be expanded and linked to other PLA improvements. Among the arms acquired by Beijing from Russia are 48 SU-27 jet fighters. They fly faster, farther, and more maneuverable than previous Chinese warplanes and in many ways are comparable to the best fighters in the U.S. But the researchers also point out that China has acquired the the sovereign many warships, something we've talked about numerous times. Taipei Times in Taiwan says China's new navy poses a threat. Says the Pentagon announced today that Secretary of Navy Richard Danzing departed on October 10th for a one-week visit to China. 
The article goes on to describe, this is the Taiwan newspaper, that uh, the Chinese Navy is a serious threat to the United States Navy. Also, Taiwan flexed its muscles yesterday. The Taiwan Air Force uh, displayed a lot of their new jet fighters yesterday uh, to send a message to China that they are prepared to fight. So i got to take a break. I'll be back in a minute with more news on American Freedom News. American Freedom News is your alternative source for news. A global government C-SPAN TV channel. This is in the New York Times today. It's on our website, AmericanFreedomNews.com. Two senators propose setting up a global equivalent of C-SPAN, the public affairs cable channel, as a way of dismantling what they call the formidable wall of secrecy that shields decision-making at leading international agencies. The Senators, Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York and Ron Wyden of Oregon, both Democrats, and Ron Wyden, one of the most liberal Democrats in in the U.S. Senate, said that despite pressure from Congress, several leading American and international financial and trade bodies continue to operate behind closed doors. They're particularly talking about the World Trade Organization, the IMF, and uh, other groups like the International Olympic Committee. They also called for disclosure by the Federal Reserve Board. The two senators suggest creating a global television network devoted to televising international agency uh, meetings. So, sometime in the future, we're going to have a global government C-SPAN and we'll get to watch Kofi Annan. And we'll get to watch the U.N. Uh, assembly as lines. Radical Muslim secret training camps inside the U.S.A. A U.N. army, global government, and world religion. West Nile virus, bubonic plague, and bioterrorism. Illegal immigration, the rising European super state. And plans to replace the American dollar with a common currency. News the left-wing media refuses to report. What else is happening the news media doesn't tell you? Listen to the program that's on the cutting edge of news. American Freedom News. Finally, there's another news network. Reporting news too hot for TV. American Freedom News. The first internet radio news network. Standing up for faith, family, and freedom. American Freedom News, the People's News Network. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the citizen reporter on the cutting edge of today's news. And now here's Rick Wiles. Hey, the Los Angeles Times says today that Israel's left-wing Jews are taking a, a beating, and that's not a physical beating, they're taking a beating in the political circles Amid the violence, uh, says activists feel a sense of humiliation and betrayal as a result of the Palestinian uprising. Again, this is L.A. Times today. It says, for years they were the political conscience of the peace process. They gave backing to then say the word China in this campaign. You know why? Because Wall Street has told both candidates, we don't want to aggravate China. So don't mention China's name. Don't mention espionage. Don't mention their military threat to the United States. Or we won't give you any money. Folks, the campaign, the political campaign, is not for you and me. These two candidates are are rehearsing, they're auditioning for for Wall Street and for the bankers. That's all this campaign is about. You and I are just an afterthought. But they're really auditioning for the for the approval of Wall Street and the international bankers. This article says China has made this is a quote from the report. China has made some significant qualitative upgrades through foreign acquisitions. But it remains to be seen how these acquisitions will be expanded and linked to other PLA improvements. Among the arms acquired by Beijing from Russia are 48 SU-27 jet fighters. They fly faster, farther, and more maneuverable than previous Chinese warplanes and in many ways are comparable to the best fighters in 
the U.S. But the researchers also point out that that many say uh, is the, the burial cloth of Jesus Christ. They want to take DNA samples from the Shroud of Turin and clone Jesus Christ. I, this is for real, folks. Fox News is reporting this today. Uh, let me read this to you. It's on our website, American Freedom News. While Christians believe Jesus Christ will someday return, they don't. They they probably don't think he'll arrive by the way of a petri dish. Yet that's exactly what a secretive group called the Second Coming Project is trying to do: clone Jesus. Members of the group see cloning technology as a chance to literally bring Christ to the modern age, find out exactly how divine he is, and perhaps work a miracle. I got news for him. He's quite capable of doing all those things by himself. He doesn't need to be cloned in a test tube in order to come back. He's going to come back, and they will know how divine he is. The article says, and again, this is Fox News. Uh, They quote one of the leaders saying, I'm hoping it will bring world peace, said a source within a group which claims 14 members from a wide range of religions and professions, not some Armageddon as a tremendous battle where where everyone dies, as some people believe. The group hope is supposed to be a spy agency. Of course, there are a lot of, um, there are, a lot of skull and bones members in the CIA, and there's a lot of Masonic influence in the CIA. And, and obviously, if you look at Masonic symbols, you will see a very strong influence of, of Arab symbols in all Masonic symbols. Is there a connection? I don't know. I just find it unusual that the director of the CIA would be in the Middle East today meeting with Yasser Arafat as war breaks out. Also, Reuters News Service is reporting that a half a million Iraqis have volunteered to fight against the Jews. This, again, from Reuters News Service, says more than a half million Iraqis have volunteered to fight with the Palestinians against the Israeli troops. This is uh, from the INA, the Iraqi news agency in Baghdad. The news agency quoted a a, uh, political official in Baghdad, a Adnan Dawad Salman as saying 514,658 men and women in Baghdad have volunteered to liberate Jerusalem from the Zionists. Iraq's most influential newspaper said on Tuesday that President Saddam Hussein's eldest son, Uday, had become the first Iraqi to volunteer to defend Palestine against... He said earlier today that that uh, there is all-out war now. They declared war. This is an official declaration of war. Israel has not declared war yet, but the Palestinians have declared war against uh, against Israel. And, of course, we have the bombing of the USS uh, Cole with the uh, killing of four U.S. sailors that has taken place uh, during the night. Uh, things have definitely heated up. Listen, I just, uh, I'm not trying to provoke... Uh, fear in anyone. I've been uh, trying to do my very best not to uh, sound as a as a fear monger on the program, but my own personal recommendation to you is today is a good day to check uh, your status, uh, your supplies, your uh, your uh, food supplies, your water, your fuel, uh, anything that you feel that you need to have uh, in uh, in supply today would be a good day to do that don't put it off i'm not going to not going to spend a lot of time on it but i'm just this is my own personal feeling i think with the wall street is starting to unravel uh, janet reno is uh, officially now the person who takes over this country in a state of emergency i think there's a real possibility of of terrorist attacks inside the united states in the next few days or weeks the motive is to unite the Palestinians. Senior Israeli source said, quote, we are before a wave of terror encouraged by the Palestinian Authority. This is the tax that Arafat is willing to pay for Palestinian unity. Among the masses of terrorists released today are not only master bomb makers, 
but also terror cell operators and those trained to commit suicide bombings. Now, that brings me to the other report, and that is that we all awoke early today to the news that a U.S. Uh, naval ship, the USS Cole, was attacked uh, during the night, a suicide bombing against the USS Cole. At least four U.S. sailors have been killed in what U.S. officials are describing as a suicide attack on a U.S. Navy destroyer in the Yemeni port of Aden. An American spokesman said a small inflatable craft packed with high explosives had rammed a destroyer, blasting a huge hole in its side. Efforts were underway uh, earlier today to save the vessel from sinking. One sailor is missing. At least 30 have been injured. There's approximately a 40-foot hole on the port side of the ship. Now, is this a sign of a wave of terrorist attacks coming to the United States? Host him and leaders of Israel and, and the Palestinians in a special summit meeting to end the fighting. Clinton had sought the summit, but Egypt said it might conflict with the meeting of Arab leaders scheduled for October 20th. Again, it's what I was saying on yesterday's program. The Arabs are uniting against Clinton. They're uniting around uh, Saddam Hussein. And you've got, for the first time in, in many years, at least going back uh, to uh, 1990 in the Gulf War, for the first time the Arabs are solidly united. And Saddam Hussein is their big hero right now. Also, Saudi Arabia's defense minister is in a meeting today in Beijing with the Chinese PLA. Go figure that one. And also, Europe becomes a new zone of war. According to the Guardian newspaper in London, the rage against the Jews has spread into Europe with the burning of Jewish synagogues in France and major protest against Israel in London streets. I got to take a break. When I come back, I'll have more news. You've got to hear the rest of today's newscast. You're not going to believe some of these reports I've got today. I'll be back in a minute. Rick Wiles, American Freedom News. You're listening to Rick Wiles, the citizen reporter on the cutting edge of today's news. Let's see, October 23rd, the first gathering of United Nations Messengers of Peace and Goodwill Ambassadors. They're going to be gathering at the U.N. headquarters in New York October 23rd. Uh, to reflect on the role of celebrity uh, advocates for the cause of world peace. The day-long event will feature Nobel Prize laureates, champion athletes, actors, musicians, authors, scientists, and news media personalities from 20 countries. A public forum about the influence of famous people... uh, Let me read this again. A public forum about the influence that famous people have in drawing attention to global problems and promoting a better world will take place from 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the U.N.'s Economic and Social Council Chamber. It will be moderated by CNN international correspondent Riz Khan. Some of the people who will be there, of course, uh, uh, Michael Douglas will be one of the stars that will be at that uh, U.N. meeting of celebrities to advance the cause of world peace. Listen, i got to sign off on the radio, WWCR. If you're listening on the net, stay tuned. I'll be back in a minute with more news. You've been listening to American Freedom News with Rick Wiles. To contact Rick, right? Media was trying to to pacify the American public in in, the... Anticipation of last night's debates between George Bush and Al Gore, trying to give the American public the appearance that uh, Clinton's foreign policy is working. But obviously, it's not the case. The thing is falling apart. Also, uh, this is another recent report that I found uh, just a few minutes ago, that Yasser Arafat has emptied the jails and prisons of Palestine. He has released all known terrorists. They have been released into the streets of Israel as of this morning. And uh, one Israeli official says that they are now prepared for a wave of terror. 
Senior Israeli security officials said Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was behind the release of Hamas and Islamic Jihad terror perpetrators. He says the motive is to unite the Palestinians. Senior Israeli source said, quote, we are before a wave of terror encouraged by the Palestinian Authority. This is the tax that Arafat is willing to pay for Palestinian unity. Among the masses of terrorists released today are not only master bomb makers, but also terror cell operators and those trained to commit suicide bombings. Now, that brings me to the other report, and that is, again, this is Fox News. Uh, they quote uh, one of the leaders saying, I'm hoping it will bring world peace, said a source within the group which claims 14 members from a wide range of religions and professions, not some Armageddon as a tremendous battle where, where everyone dies, as some people believe. The group hopes a clone Jesus fetus could be placed in a female volunteer's womb and then carried to term in a totally immaculate conception. The birth is tentatively scheduled for December 25, 2001, and the mother wouldn't necessarily necessarily have to be a virgin, the source said. Once born, the baby Jesus clone would be like any other kid, savior of mankind or not, except that they hope he'll usher in an age of peace on earth. They quote... uh, the source is saying, quote, we're not planning on raising the child in the lab and in, 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 in filling him with our beliefs. If this child is what we hope he is, he won't need to be raised that way. Folks, this is incredible. I mean, here we are on the day that Israel is in war with the Palestinians. And, and, and we're also hearing that a group of of people want to take DNA and clone Jesus Christ and brand TV channel. This is in the New York Times today. It's on our website, AmericanFreedomNews.com. Two senators propose setting up a global equivalent of C-SPAN, the public affairs cable channel, as a way of dismantling what they call the formidable wall of secrecy that shields decision-making at leading international agencies. The Senators, Daniel Patrick Moynihan of New York and Ron Wyden of Oregon, both Democrats, and Ron Wyden, one of the most liberal Democrats in in the U.S. Senate, said that despite pressure from Congress, several leading American and international financial and trade bodies continue to operate behind closed doors. They're particularly talking about the World Trade Organization, the IMF, and uh, other groups like the International Olympic Committee. They also called for disclosure by the Federal Reserve Board. The two senators suggest creating a global television network devoted to televising international agency uh, meetings. So, sometime in the future, we're going to have a global government C-SPAN and we'll get to watch Kofi Annan. And we'll get to watch the UN uh, Assembly as they make decisions for global government. 